What if the US dollar enters a spiral it can't get out of? What will the Fed do? That's what we will discuss here. And then I will expand out further into the factors that are important to you. Let's begin by taking a look at this article here out of the Wall Street Journal. And the general trend of this is simply that the US dollar has been strengthening month after month. Strong dollar extends gains with no end to the rally in sight. Few on Wall Street see a change in its trajectory, reflecting fears of a global recession and a deterioration in Europe. So while we know that the US dollar is flawed, we know that the US dollar is being inflated. But when you compare it to the other choices, it looks much better, doesn't it? See what's happening in Japan. Look at Europe and you see the weakness. But what is really happening here? I don't think enough people are acknowledging the devaluation of the currencies. Look at Europe, look at the ECB, specifically in their actions. They brought interest rates down into the negative. They pumped so much money in and they committed to doing more. They never had a tough stance at all. It's the same with Japan. And now they've both have an issue. Soaring dollar could help Fed in a fight against inflation, but the lofty greenback is making it harder for life harder for some of the US trading partners. And that gets me into the doom, this doom loop. Okay. This is a big article, really important. I will read you the key points of it. I need you to understand what's happening with the US dollar. And then we could be much more aware of all of the other factors. This could be the start of a dollar doom loop like no other. A reverse currency war beckons. So much money is coming into the US, into the dollar, seeking safety. That's what they talk about here. And you see it going up to its strongest level on record, the dollar index. Here you go. The move risks becoming a self-reinforcing feedback loop, given that the vast majority of cross-border trade is still denominated in U.S. dollars, and a stronger U.S. currency has historically translated into a broad hit to the world economy. So there is a ceiling at how far it can go without it creating a problem, and I believe that has already started to happen. Against the backdrop of higher than expected inflation and still elevated commodity prices, the concern is that we are in for a dollar doom loop like never before. What makes this version of the doom loop really scary is that it's kind of hard to see how those circuit breakers will play out over the near term. We have a European problem, which creates pressure on the euro, which sends the dollar higher, which worsens the manufacturing cycle, which does this whole thing again. But is the Fed going to pivot with spot inflation at an eight handles when you've got inflation? You know, it's actually at 9.1% the last time, I believe. Is the Fed really going to change course? But I mean, it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, is it? Look, this is the dollar doom loop. Stronger dollar, lower global manufacturing, lower commodity prices, lower global trade worries about growth. And it cycles repeats over and over. You know, we can look at what the Federal Reserve has done, obviously uh, devaluing the currency, but understand that this is all happening around the world at the same time. So we must be aware of each piece. The key question is to what extent the stronger dollar reduces the Fed's inclination to go even bigger on interest rate hikes in the coming months, in turn potentially providing some relief to exporters and leverage borrowers around the world. Now, the markets themselves have been doing well over the last little while. In fact, as I record this video, I'm watching stocks in Asia and they're up. And this is, you know, for various reasons, but the, you know, the overall trend here is that people are not concerned. Look at the type of stocks, look at the type of investments that are still doing very well every time there's a little bit of a bounce. And it's all the same names we saw in the cycle from 2020 into 2021. Does that give you a little bit of insight 
as to what's happening here. People are, oh, there's maximum fear. Not at all. Because they wouldn't be touching those things if they were fearful. Many investors are fleeing the stock market, but some are doubling down. Quote, if I lose $15,000, I'm not going to die. The market is plummeting and some amateur investors see this as a good sign to jump in, a good reason to jump in. Is that really the case? I mean, you let me know. Put that down in the comments and we can talk about that. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because when you do, you're supporting the channel and you're also notifying the algorithm that this is some good stuff and it will be more likely to come up in the recommended and suggested for other people. Hey, I appreciate that. Look at what's happening with the Federal Reserve and the actions that they're taking. Compared to Japan and the Euro area, you see on the left-hand side, this is the balance sheet as of July 2022. And you see Euro area, the US, and then Japan further down. But as we compare that, and by the way, J Japanese currency weakened so much. So in US dollar terms, it's going to look different, right? But on the right-hand side, you see it as a percentage of the nominal GDP. So as in comparison to the size of the economy, and Japan has printed so much of their currency, completely devaluing it. So now investors are turning and they're saying, well, I guess I'll put it with the U.S., buy up some U.S. debt, buy some stocks, whatever the case may be, because it looks much more attractive, doesn't it? You could see that we are seeing deflationary forces. And why? Nobody wants to acknowledge the elephant in the room, and that is, remember all that money that they printed and the interest rates at rock bottom for so long? Things have changed, right? They're starting to bring that down, I believe, on a global level, from the absolute peak of the global balance sheets, it has declined by $1 trillion. And you see a direct correlation there with what's going on in the markets. I'm not one to deny that. You know, people out there may, and I know that you're here as my subscriber. I mean, you know what's going on. Housing market update prices begin to fall from record highs. I'll show you some charts here. This is from Redfin. And everything we've talked about before, but it's nice to see it in a chart form. Median sales price, 11.8% year over year, right? Okay, but look at what's happened recently. You could see this decline, that red line, right? Look at this. This is 2022, by the way. Look at this. This is the median asking price. We're watching all of those stats kind of fall down from their peaks. Mortgage payments, you could see that. Looking at pending sales down. So the, so the general trend is kind of there, okay? Not on all statistics, not on all across the board. But one of those things, active listings, inventory, these things have been piling up. And so what do we see? People are starting to change their attitude. And one of the things that have been hitting people the hardest has been certainly gasoline. It's come down from the peak, as I've talked about before. But it's food. Food prices have continued to rise. And while we've seen, you know, some things coming down, cooking oils here and whatever, palm oil and this and that, but overall, they've been rising considerably. And this hits the bottom 50% of people uh, in terms of their, you know, bottom 50% of wealth and households it hits them the hardest. I thought this was interesting and it was completely and entirely connected to what we're talking about today. And it's, you know... The number one thing right now um, I think people should be aware of is what we're seeing in Europe. Heat wave coming through. Energy prices are sky high. Problems politically. I mean, there's so many different things. I haven't even mentioned what's happening in Italy Italy, because I think it's every 13 months there's a new government. Like, are we even going to talk about that anymore? It's, they should just, once a year, just change the government. They just install a new leader and that's it. Anyway... Germany's strategy up to this point was to outsource their military to the US, their financial management to the EU, and their energy supply to Europe, and, the in, and their end market to China. This was the complete globalization of an economy. You could see it at this point, I think they're in extreme trouble. So when you do that, just like the Roman Empire did because they were expanding too far, too fast, they ran into a big issue. 
Well, Germany and other countries are doing this to a great degree, and they're finding right now today that might have been an issue. Throughout history, most countries would not outsource items that were important to their well-being, food being one of them, and energy is showing up as extremely important. What's going to happen now is each society is going to have to think about, did I outsource something that I am not comfortable with? That's big right here. As they mention in the next paragraph, the U.S. is positioned very well because they've got a lot of food. They've got a lot of energy. They're shipping it overseas, which, in my opinion, brings prices up for people in the United States. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's just what they're doing. So that's real key. That's important. Um, when we look at what's happening with the U.S. dollar, when we see this really taking place today, I think people should be understanding this. Like, it's not just one factor. There's political events. There's what the central banks are doing. There's what's going on with interest rates in general, right? You got to see that if interest rates start going higher, especially in the U.S., it starts looking really attractive because you've got places around the world deemed safe and their returns are going to be very dismal. And so, hey, why not put it with the central bank, the Federal Reserve? We trust the Federal Reserve to make sure that they'll do everything right. So money starts heading their way towards the U.S. government and they buy up their debt and they you know, invest in their stock market and so on. And this is something that creates this feedback loop or doom loop that oh, gets to a ceiling at some point. And we enter into, as they mentioned here, the word that they use is a reverse currency war. So much money is flooding in. Will the Federal Reserve really be able to simply say, all right, we're good on the hikes. We're going to stop there. Only time will tell. The things that we can do today are to mitigate some of the price increases. And these are things that I've talked about many times before. I've made videos about this. I've got my playlist, How To and Solutions. And of course, for anybody who have read my books, you're already aware of you know, all these different things that I talk about. So um, I'll, I'll say that if you appreciate the information, hit the thumbs up. The thumbs up, that like button really does support the channel. And don't forget to join the 280, dare I say, three club, the 283 club, 283,000 people all across the world that want the data. They don't want the political nonsense. They don't want all this, you know, talk of opinions and oh my goodness. They just want the raw information, and that's what I'm here to bring you. So if you want to, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.